Why would I make them so uncomfortable? It probably has to do with your reputation. They feel your methods, your theories are... Spooky? Do you think I'm spooky? His face was so blank and expressionless. He didn't even seem human. I'm not turning my back on anyone! Have you ever found a metal implant in your body? Have you checked everywhere? Mulder, you have to understand! Put it down! You put it down first! Scully! How do you guys introduce your Kings of King? I mean, I've listened to it. I mean, there's a whole song. <laughs> Someone sing. Someone do the song. I'm not going to sing the song. <laughs> King, they're kings of king. That is the not king. It. It's, it's Stephen King. King. Yeah, that's oh. it. It's just the word Stephen King. Yeah. Also, it's yeah. not kings of king. <laughs> the yeah. kings, they're all the king. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to a special crossover episode of Fox Mulder is a Maniac. It's me him. Ah, oh, and the, Kings, of King. Kings of Kings! Kings of Kings! We're taking over, baby! Sorry, I just yeah. wanted to yell cock since he got to yell for me. Cock. Cock, cock. yeah, That's do solid. It. We have the good. better acronym. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, okay, let's go around the table here. Mm-hmm. Uh, start, I'm, one of, I'm one of the hosts, uh, David Bell. Um, I'm a second host, Tom Ryman. One of you two. Now, when are you? I don't two? care. Our, our I don't care. I don't care host. which one. I don't care which fucking one. But when are you say something? <laughs> Abe, what is this <laughs> game of chicken? What are we doing? What are we I doing, dude? I guess I lost. What the fuck? You did I lose. <laughs> I right, can't I'm, believe that happened. We it both Jesus. got into our brain at the same time. We're like <laughs> that. The bit is the bit was not we would not go? speak. Yeah. God damn. God Terrible. damn! Sorry, Tom. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, I'm Dave. Dave. Sorry, I break Tom. First. I'm Michael Swaim. Mm. I, I'm the guy who always breaks second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's yeah. the funny one. And he's, together, he's the bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> together, you guys uh, are playing it fast and loose with everyone's time. Uh, That's yeah, right. we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you now, if people are wondering why. Uh, we have a couple of a couple of kings of king here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're covering uh, season five, episode ten of the X Files, which is otherwise known as Chinga, which is otherwise known as the episode written by Stephen King. Yep. Oh. Or at least co-written. I yeah. D- yeah. did not know that. Yeah. And yeah, I'm yeah, the yeah, nominal yeah. Stephen King expert. Yeah. I just thought it was a ridiculously transparent, thinly veiled ripoff of everything Stephen King. Uh-huh. That completely changes my perspective oh, really, on the episode. I'm glad you, you brought that up. You really hmm. didn't know. Okay. I did not know that. I watched it. <laughs> to be honest, you said, you're not wrong, though. You came back and you were like, watch this. It's called Chinga. And I was like, all right. And I was like, there's a lot of Stephen King-esque stuff in here. I guess that's why yep. they had us on. But I did not make that final connection. That is very oh, yeah. interesting. Cool. All Th- right. This is co-written by Stephen King. Well, plenty I, to talk about. I, yeah. I am I am holding in my hand right now mm-hmm. uh, Resistor Serve, the official guide to the X-Files. And I can sort of start us off by telling you guys the backstory to this. Please, but I'll just say they should have called it Kinga. That would have been clearer for me. Yeah, that really... Well, fun fact. The name Chinga uh, is a a Spanish word for fuck. Uh, And Stephen King didn't know that when he named the episode. (laughs) Chinga. And apparently... (laughs) That's so Stephen King, though. That's so perfect. Uh, So why did he name it that? I don't know. It's the name of the doll... I guess. That's dumb. Uh, yeah. No one at Fox spoke Spanish, like, I mean, that checks swears, out, right? Slangs? Yeah. I mean, at I the guess. very least, nobody in standards and practices did. And yet yeah. Vicente Fox was president of Mexico. <laughs> it boggles the mind. Mm-hmm. You don't um, touch Stephen King's word. He's <laughs> Stephen King. Yeah, no, he doesn't get edited, so... No. He's a Maybe white the- man. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> Maybe that we're going to a- get into oh, it. <clears throat> Could he, I get introduced gets- separately from Abe next time? <laughs> 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 it's funny you say you don't get edited because he actually got edited a lot for oh, this episode. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Of course, um, of course. It should be so. This whole thing started when Stephen King appeared on Celebrity Jeopardy with David Duchovny. Uh, I believe that is the it what is, are frogs it is mean? The what are frogs? <laughs> what are frogs? <laughs> yeah. What Turns out that uh, they got to talking, 
while f- uh, filming that, and he told David Duchovny, oh, he'd love to do an episode. Uh, they didn't hear from him for a while after that. Uh, Stephen King then uh, contacted Chris Carter and said he wanted to do an episode of Millennium. Remember Millennium? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, I do. Uh, and Chris Carter was like, that's a little weird, but okay. He then called him back and said, actually, I want to do an X-Files, to which Chris Carter said, okay, Hell that's fine, yeah. too. Of Hell course, that's wanted what you wanted to do. It was kind and polite of you to mention Millennium. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm Stephen King. Uh, uh, and so then, like, more time passed, an event, he just keep getting calls from Stephen King. Uh, they never actually met in person. Uh, ev- they just went back and forth writing the episode. Uh, eventually, uh, Chris Carter had to rewrite a, a sizable amount to shorten it. Uh, and just to get the tone of the show, uh, all the broad strokes are Stephen King, uh, as you can tell, since it takes place in Maine and has a lot of like Stephen King stuff in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of tropes. Uh, and barely features any Scully Mulder dynamic as if Stephen King didn't want to like break his back trying to live in the X-Files universe. He just wanted to write a Stephen King story. And <clears throat> well, they do yeah, have the out. phone yeah, calls, exactly. which are like a tried and true like methodology of X-Files. Like the phone calls, like for Scully has, has an episode, she calls, Mulder has an episode, he calls, and we get a lot of stuff. Usually it involves a bathtub. Uh, mm-hmm. We get that in X Files. That's like tried and true. Yeah. They do one like a season at a certain point. Um, That's I, true, but it's like Stephen King presents the X Files in yeah, a big, big way. You really feel <laughs> not only just the Kingness of it all, but you feel this reverence for King. Like it's atypical I for an X Files. Someone which I was figured doing everyone would a, pick up on. I thought it was the Chris Carter and the other nerds doing a loving homage to everything Stephen King. And I was actually blown away by the almost Tarantino-esque ability they had to Rolodex, sometimes obscure King tropes, mm-hmm. and now it all is totally mundane just, and yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Classic X-File. Classic. Uh-huh. Um, how, how familiar are you guys with the X-Files? I should have asked you guys that. Very. Uh, this is maybe the fourth episode i've seen com- in its wow. complete, like yeah. in its entirety wow you're, you're getting the quite, gamut. Got, got quite a journey ahead of you michael yeah you do mm. well three of the other episodes were from the daggett era and i oh no oh, dear. And, <laughs> yeah oh no and then i but see what then i'm dealing the, with over here no, but the other worst yeah, part is man. like I've also listened to every episode of this podcast and through other forms of osmosis, I also now know the plot of X Files without having seen it. Right. Should I still watch it? Yeah. I mean yeah. Okay. It's the All right, then I will. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um before I close this book, I, I also just want to note it was of course filmed in Vancouver where they filmed the X Files. The gas station s- scene was literally across the street from their production office. And luckily for the casting director, <clears throat> Canadians sound like they're from Maine, at least according to this <laughs> book. And so it wasn't a problem. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, the, the little girl in this episode, uh, it, uh, for fans of the X-Files, might recognize from the episode Paper Hearts. She was one of the dead kids in Mulder's dreams. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do we this know who's directed... the voice of oh, the doll? Oh, that's a good question, actually. I didn't look it up. No, wow. I don't know that. Yeah. I could look uh, that up, but I'm not going to. Sure. This is also directed by Kim Manners, mm-hmm. uh, the late Kim Manners, who uh, did a lot of the classic ex- episodes. Mm-hmm. Um you know, um, yeah. War of the Coprophages, DPO, Humbug, Die Hand, Die Verlets, uh, uh, Tunguska, Leonard Betts, Max, Demons, the one Mulder drills his own brain. Uh, he's He <laughs> yeah. did it forever, and so he, he was obviously very excited about doing a Stephen King uh, script. Kind of I the imagine. Cliff Bull of, um, of X-Files. Cliff Bull being... 
a very like the equivalent kind of like day player of uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Right, right, right. I right. just know who I'm talking to, and I'm like, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you guys, guys know, know Cliff Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know. I didn't know. I didn't. Well, know Well, he's was. a director of many, many, just like Kim Manners is for X. X right. Files, yeah. That checks out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I don't know. How do we want to do this? Do we want to talk about uh, some Stephen King aspects? Do you want to get straight into World's Luckiest Detective? What are you guys feeling right now? I feel like we should really get out of the way how Fox Mulder is a maniac. I mean, it's your show. You do what you I want. like mm-hmm. staying on format. That's more fun for me because, it, you know, when you're visiting your friend's house, you want to play with their toys. Sure. Well, yeah. I just, I guess, want to ask is any other impressions about the episode in general you guys have and want to share? Michael, you're so right. Like the clothesline scene felt like Pennywise. Mm-hmm. Uh, hair stuck in the ice cream uh, ice cream machine from the classic Maximum Overdrive. Mm-hmm. Like it really, it does have a lot of like Stephen King esque things in it. I mean, there's the whole everyday horrors. Usually, they're like killer right. clowns, killer dogs, killer cars, killer dolls. It's all set in Maine, which is a mainstay. Yeah. Of, of course. So there's like mainstay. so many tropes. The town with a secret is another trope. Like, it's oh, not yeah. the whole town, but the trope seems to play out. I think mm-hmm. there's a character called Jane in this episode. There who, is. She, at one she's, point, she's the uh, uh, puritanical busybody, which right. is another, oh, yeah. another Stephen King trope. Another, yeah, and she archetype. represents kind of the town with a secret trope, which is yeah. uh, just the idea of, like, someone presenting to the audience, uh, well, she's a witch, and her mom was a witch and her grandma was a witch and there's a secret and people outside of town wouldn't know about it. Um, that isn't really prevalent throughout the episode, but you do also have the mother with the child trying to hide the fact that she's (laughs) being possessed essentially by this doll, Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the episode. So it's more or less the same trope. I would also argue it's a notch gorier it's always one step more brutal than you expect given the milieu that it works within, Mm -hmm. which is also Stephen King's thing is he tends to break the social contract by setting up, uh, what feels like a made for TV movie and then doing real R rated kills. Like that's kind of his thing. Whereas the, it doesn't feel sleazy like a Jason movie where, you know, it's R rated all throughout. Stephen King likes to throw some like lovable teens coming of age at you. And then something really gruesome happens, which makes it even sort of weirder and more jarring. Uh, and the moment that really stood out to me as super Kingy was where's my popcorn. Where's my popcorn? Where's my which popcorn? is literally just the where's my cake and from Creep Show. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the, the also, relationship between the mom and the daughter is basically the cre- a recapitulation of Creep Show. Yeah, and then yeah. the rep- the repetition of hokey pokey. Uh, oh, yeah. Hokey pokey, yeah, let's like, have fun. Y- y- I want to play. Yeah, just the using of You'll like float old, too. old-timey songs like that and, and seemingly innocuous things that's that are That's so repeated. distinctly Americana, and yeah. that's King's, you know, that's how he writes. They're also with the everyday horrors, like the killer clowns and stuff. There's usually everyday solutions. So, like, the big right. bad deaths Burning in King is stories are usually mundane. Simple, yeah. Hey, like guys. they freeze to death. They're poisoned. Like even in it, with its all of its <laughs> embracing of the supernatural. In the end, it's just a bunch of kids like curb stomping a clown. Right, that's my yeah. favorite resolution to any Stephen King. Is that is that it? The ultimate conclusion of it is a group of adults finally getting sick of a monster's bullshit, and they just beat yeah. him to death. They just. With a pipe, with like up, some pipes, beat that monster to death. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very it, that's a huge thing though because like when you deal with like killer cars, like even in Christine, we just did this episode. Uh, what do you do? Well, what's the car's worst enemy? I don't know. A junkyard where they smash it all together. You know, it's like just the obvious, like with time, and when we all stop believing in the thing. Uh, the killer clown has power. The killer dog has power. The killer car has power. Once we overcome that hurdle, uh, it's just a mundane death. Why is it called Chinga? Yeah. 
adopt. We asked that, that, we asked that earlier, and we don't have any idea. Okay, yeah. it's the name of the doll, but I still don't understand to Stephen King what that means. It could just, just be a word. Baby. It could just be a name. Yeah. Um, but I also want to point out, according to Wikipedia, that the uh, effects supervisor, Lori Kelson George, tested the scene of David Dave the Butcher with the knife sticking out of his eye on her 9 and 11 year old sons explaining quote I gauge a lot of the show by whether my kids can stand them or not if they can't I succeeded Chinga bothered them a lot what a <laughs> fucking childhood hey yeah, look right? at this no no hey look hey, at check this, this out Let's. That scar you? Did that scar you? Good. That's good. amazing. <laughs> because like I'm they then have to job. grow up. They then have to grow up in a world where like all their friends are like the X Files rocks, <laughs> and like, hey, you want to watch an episode? Like, no, not really, actually. Uh, <laughs> the show did a lot of dark shit for me. Yeah, oh, that's I, wonderful. Being someone who's only seen a handful of episodes. Are they usually as dark, or is that Stephen King bringing that to the table? Because they're, oh, they can they're get dark, they're, pretty dark. They're usually they're, pretty dark, yeah. They're grim, but are they... Because the, one of the other ones I've seen is the circus one, which I understand is one of the better ones. Humbug, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, that's, that's a tongue... They're, there's, they're, they definitely go tongue and cheek. Like, they're aware of... Of, of what they're doing. <laughs> of what's funny about it. Yeah. yeah. It's like they do go tongue in cheek a lot. But in they're, general, I, this is yeah. pretty consistent with the tone of the X-Files. They, okay. So yeah, like slitting your throw with a record is not out of place in the X-Files? Nope. No. All they're right. actually playful like the Coen brothers are playful, right. in, in my opinion. Like in terms of the horror genre, I think that the X-Files filmmakers are much more like the reason that they are more playful and there's tone that is like fun uh, is something that like Stephen King never really cracked. Like he's never that fun or funny. Right? Drink, he mentioned cracked. <laughs> he's de- <laughs> he's, he's definitely not. he's definitely not funny. He's Look, not I, funny. I, no. I, he I tries love Stephen, sometimes. I love Stephen King, but the most grating it's part fun. of reading a Stephen King thing is when he has a character that's supposed to be funny. What is no, it's like? It's like really when built. NPR hosts try to be funny, it never yeah. comes off. Yeah, it's exactly. just like, too hard. Yeah. And so if he's vanilla, they're a little bit different. Like X-Files is a little bit like okay. more punk rock. Yeah. I mean, they're I not definitely really think crap. there was some because the uh, yup thing from the cop is very Fargo specifically. Right. And then I also thought there might be some trying to be Spielberg from King cuz this is like literally what's funny to me is there's a point where she questions a guy who seems like a Jaws-esque and it's right. called Amis Beach. And it, this Jaws-esque guy is sure. describing yeah. this horrible thing from the sea and he doesn't. But he literally could have said it had a doll's eyes because it's a doll. It's a doll. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say totally the X-Files does jump around a bit. Early seasons is a lot more consistent. Laser later seasons it gets it starts becoming like a parody of itself. That's true. Uh, in a lot of ways, and gets a lot more playful. Uh, have you guys? I would say they still they post, still have. Have you guys done oh, post? Uh, what is it? Postmodern Prometheus yet? We just oh, yeah. uh, went past that. Oh, one. Yeah. That is a okay. So we're already episode. in this stage of X Files. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, we're season five. It's right before the movie. Mm. And the movie, oh, and uh, I've seen the kind movie. of, oh, okay. The mo- the first movie marks the transition into when it really starts going, as some would say downhill. I wouldn't say downhill, but it starts getting a little off the rails. Right. Uh, we're still like kind of on the rails here. We're shaking on the rails. I would say. Yeah, we're about to we're about to just shake apart. On the, right on the, tra- yeah. on the they, tracks you can really tell with the um which is probably a good transition to be honest uh you can really mm-hmm. tell between the um scenes with uh the phone calls how they're just just diving right into you know what you want you fucking sycophants yeah, oh you, yeah you fuck Mulder is, Mulder <laughs> is it it up. kind of a parody <laughs> Uh, well, let's let's do it. Let's transition to our first section called World's Luckiest Detective. Yes. This is where we just identify uh, moments in which uh, Fox Mulder gets ridiculously lucky uh, during the episode. In this case, we're going to have to swap out Mulder for Scully because uh, she's the one who's actually 
uh, g- you know, going going through all the stuff. Uh, okay, sure. Because is... Mulder makes several guesses that are comically wrong, which is the point. So he scores a zero on mm-hmm. yes his detectiveness. He does not. This time. Yes, no, he does not detect. No, he doesn't detect at all. I would say Scully gets the most lucky when she drives into a town and literally drives into an X file. Uh, yeah, at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, I mean that man, how of, how often has that happened in the X-Files? Yeah. Um it, it had the murder she wrote air about it where or even the TNG episode uh Captain's Holiday where Picard oh, finally goes on and so many procedural shows from the 90s did this where the person who is defined by their job because that's how you have a procedural the characters in it are the job right so you have the king of it or the whoever is the the epitome of the job in this case Scully is FBI and it's like uh yeah they go on vacation but they just can't quite get away from whatever right. it is they do they're still housing it up uh, yeah. or what have you so yeah i really liked that aspect as like it always works on me it's like a bottle episode i don't really resent it if you pull it off well yeah of course in captain's holiday picard goes to risa claims he's not there to have sex but uh hangs out in a blue speedo the entire episode with a sex oh, he's, idol he's and wearing, then, yeah. he is wearing a sex uniform in that yeah episode. He is. <laughs> yeah but it also stops the future from being destroyed or some shit. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's just, he's wearing his dress fucks as he's doing it. Yeah. But again, he just does a Star Trek in the same way yeah. that Scully goes on vacation and does an X-Files. Yeah. 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 She also, uh, the guy at the supermarket also happens to be the creepy old, like Stephen King exposition old man mm-hmm. uh, who happened to be on the boat uh, where they find the doll. She gets right. so much information from just like a couple people in this, uh, which yeah. I guess it works. It's not like astronomical. Uh, well, I, I don't I know. Mean, she, it's she also she literally just walks through it. Like she's yes, yeah. it that's really... the main thing. Is it's a case that's waiting to be solved. The steps that she takes make sense, but they make sense to the point that any of us could have solved them. I think she's lucky right. in that she's working with. A, a local cop who's so incompetent that you can just put two and two together on your vacation <laughs> and he'll be like, man, this fancy ass FBI lady really cracked the case for us. She's He's also, I, I love that he is super incompetent. He's also like the most agreeable human being in the world. Like yeah. he, he just kind of like like it's it's so he doesn't fight he, Scully. He doesn't no, care about no. jurisdiction. His, no. his facial expression never even changes. <laughs> he's just like <laughs> oh, like whatever she says. He's just like okay, let's sure. just do this. this is, and I don't honestly, know if that was the scripting of, or the acting, but it felt very Fargo to me. It felt yeah, super uh, second right. cop yeah. from exactly. Fargo because it, it like it's all of these things are by design. Like what you're pointing out is by design, which is irregular for x files because usually in x files the agents get involved by trying to thwart the villain or the monster in like because this is a monster of the week story right Mm -hmm. uh they usually are trying something's wreaking havoc on something and they come in usually and usually at the halfway mark they double down uh, so that the second half, the last 20 minutes, is essentially the story of them getting in the way of the villain in or, and then they prevail, right? Or they find out some stuff and then it's left resolved. That's X-Files, right? This is King. And this kind of shows you a reverence for King because they adjusted things. You talked about how, uh, like, uh, what was it? It was Chris Carter. Chris Carter like kind of rewrote this episode mm-hmm. uh, because he's designing usually a, like a novel or a feature length, which is why this thing feels so slow. Like the first, like I remember looking down and saying like, how far are we into this? And I'm like, Oh shit, there's only like 16 minutes left of this thing. Right. And yeah, three people have died, but that is really, another way in which she's a lucky detective is it's, 
extraordinarily lucky based on what we know about evil dolls that mm-hmm. the first thing you try microwaving it works. I thought oh, that yeah. doll would fucking disappear right. and reappear in the attic right. or whatever. And it's that's how also didn't work, but she, yeah. Yeah, she's also lucky that the doll decided to wait until that weekend to just go on a fucking killing spree. Oh, really? <laughs> Completely <laughs> really just, blow its cover. Yeah. She's yeah. also very lucky the doll didn't kill her Yeah, when she was dragging it to the microwave. Right. Um, I want to point out real quick that cop, uh, Tom, you'll probably find this especially fun. He's in f- three other X-Files episodes. He's very familiar, yeah. Uh, two of which, he plays a sheriff or a detective. Sure. He's just always a cop. He's a uh, detective blankety blank in that, Jose Chum's He sure is. Yep, yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, he's just, like, I like his role in this because it's almost like he's tired of being a cop in the X-Files. And he's like, <laughs> right. you know what? Whatever you say. He's not tired. It's fine. He's not tired of those residuals, I'll tell you that. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the the doll is very they're very lucky the doll uh does what it does when it does it. Uh because it can it seems like it can make uh an entire supermarket full of people do something. So why can't it affect Scully when she's dragging it to the microwave, you know? Yeah. It's it's weird that like the whole town doesn't know about the doll and like worship the doll and send the doll a portion of their paycheck. That, like, that, that doll should rule the town. Right? Yeah. Oh, their weird yeah. mis their weird collective misunderstanding that they think the kid is nice. It's like you think that kid is nice? The kid is very public about being involved yeah. in what's going on. Yeah. Also, it the kid is seem- not nice. Both, both she and the doll are mask off. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want the my entire I, episode. I want to the my point records. That- Where's my popcorn? Yeah. Well, She's I'll demanding. actually save it for the appropriate segment. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we have anything else for World's Luckiest Detective? Any other things we want to say before we move on? I mean, I just wanted to point out once again that Scully sure immediately goes for the microwave. Like, she's done this a yeah. hundred times. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, you know what? Evil you know, doll microwave like, done deal. This is just yeah. her go-to maneuver to get rid just of dolls. Like, yeah, you throw that in the microwave. <laughs> well. And I'll just point out that someone should have gotten killed by the giant lobster body. That was, dis- that was a disappointing red herring, if you will. Yeah, yeah she lucked out. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I, I guess that brings us into our next section. Our 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 main our main chunk mm-hmm. our our big old the big old meat chunk me up yeah 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 it's time to uh, I don't know uh, I mean uh, what up, do we do what up, we, we're we, gonna pull up we our, get in the bath pull up our lobster traps I don't know oh yeah get in the bath <laughs> no, we, let's do that we get in the bath we ignore the uh, the telephone uh, we wake up in the morning we get into an all black outfit like we're pulling a heist open our residuals uh, checks. Open our residual Chachanga, am I right? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Folks, let's let's glide on into Mulder after dark. Oh yeah, this is what we love. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all perfect. Can we uh, can I quickly st- st- Oh my god. I'm okay. Uh, okay. We got we got a little bit too into Mulder after yeah. dark. A little too into it. That was the soundtrack from Alien Probe, the tape <laughs> that Mulder watched. In you, know what, you know what? The world's deadliest swarms. He lied I... and called it the world's deadliest swarms. Clearly, pornography or yeah. aliens jamming shit up people's well, asses. But then it was <laughs> then, then it was really world's deadliest swarms. Right, so. I, I would argue it's. I would argue that or because they show him or, get up and he he pauses it and there's a guy covered. In bees. Covered in bees, that might yeah. just be more of the porn, right? It might. Oh, be I a didn't very see that hyper specific yeah. porn that Mulder Wait, is watching. That Shot confuses. See, TV. I don't even like that. What does that mean? The offer is then that it is means like, this is his pornography. There's a running gag that Mulder watches porn. He just has porn all over his office. He watches it mm-hmm. casually, right? Um, there's an episode where he body switches with a man, and one of the first things he does is watch porn. In the man's body. But I guess my point is, what are we trying? To, what's the joke and or if it's not a joke? Like, what's the Here's, moment that you're trying I, to get I, from? It actually is World's Deadliest Swarms, and it's in an alien probe case. I it's don't playing, understand. It's playing a joke on the audience who's who are fans of the show up no, to this no, no, point. Because no, no, no. it's, it's playing with the idea that Mulder watches uh, porn all the time, and then it's like 
It's like, haha, it really was deadly. I disagree. Swarms. I disagree. I, but you porn disagree, moans okay. are not the same moans as I'm <laughs> being different. swarmed no, by these moans. No, they're not at all. They're not at all. I'm just, I'm telling <laughs> you what I, I think the sure. episode is doing. <laughs> There's a well, very clear answer here, which is that, okay. <laughs> which is that Fox Mulder, this is his pornography. He edits audio of actual porn <laughs> over video footage of swarm death he's right that's not, a, that's not entirely and he calls it div- alien probe yeah that's, for whatever that, that, reason that's, that's, calls that's it whatever as, he wants man yeah that's not as big of a swing as you as you maybe might think because we've seen him we, in previous episodes we've seen him like study pornography like he watches mm-hmm. it very clinically but then yes. it'll it'll show him like watching the bigfoot tape and it'll cut away so yeah. He watched the Bigfoot tape like in bed. Yes, yeah, no, he's uh, shit, like man. he's going to master. He's got he's, oils. He's wailing on his hog to cryptid videos and shit yeah. like that. He he yeah. he studies pornography like an alien. But in Mulder order to has... reach completion, he has to put audio of actual porn for some reason. It's just his <laughs> thing. Well, it, yeah, no, I think Mulder has watched so much pornography that just normal porn is not going to do it for him no. and he's trying all sorts of things just to break down this moment this is call number two and i do still want to talk about call number one sure but throughout this episode Mulder calls scully or scully calls Mulder. yeah, yeah it happens yeah, yeah. four times um in number two Mulder's looking at the tv he has a vhs tape labeled alien probe and it's not a it's not like a cover it's like a he wrote the words alien probe on it uh there's moaning uh just for some reason, I want to note that he has like at least fifteen pencils in his pencil holder and just one pen. They have a little mm-hmm. arc. Uh, they do have a little arc. He has a microscope behind his desk. I don't know what he's looking at. Uh, and he says to Scully, "He's watching World's Dead- Deadliest Swarms." So yeah, either he put the moaning sounds like it's clearly the sounds of porn. He like Abe said he either that, either they want us to believe it's actually world's deadliest swarms but i'm still not sure why the tape says alien probe uh i thought that- it was in reference to earlier in the episode he had said to her oh it's a shame you're on vacation i'm paraphrasing it's shame on you you're on vacation because yep. i have a classic badass x files you'd be jealous of so you go on your precious vacation i'll be here solving this x file so oh, man i thought that that was like he got some, you know, some nut job sent him an alien probe autopsy tape, and that was his lead that he's digging into over the weekend oh. or whatever. But and it's then he got not. distracted. It's swarms or porn <laughs> or the audio oh, yeah. from if, the grizzly man over porn. I don't know what it is. What if what if he started with alien probe? It turned out to not go anywhere, and then he swapped it in for his weird porn. His weird reel of porn slash the world's deadliest swarms mashups. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's gotta be that. what it is. It's literally the um, only thing it could be. Yeah. This is a very special <clears throat> moment, because it, it is... I know what the episode's probably trying to do as a gag, but those moans are from a porn. They aren't from people getting, getting attacked by bees. No. No, uh, there's masculine and feminine moans of pleasure. Yeah. I, my cousin was attacked oh, by bees <laughs> and it didn't, I know the yeah. sound and it's nothing like I've, the sounds of yeah. human pleasure. I've been attacked by bees. There yeah, you go. the sounds is saying, oh my God, bees. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's so, right. And then, and you then say also- the word bees. You don't have to fish around for that word. People scream. This was an 11 year old child. She screamed. Oh my God, bees! She didn't yeah. moan seductively. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is a porn called "World's Deadliest Swarms," and mm-hmm. it's a porn where people get off on being covered in bees. Have you guys seen eel porn? <laughs> no. Okay. Should I? No. Maybe I got a theory. Maybe it's an alien probe, as in to say aliens are just like probing if like we're down investigating. With this stuff. Yeah, it's you an know because that's what they're idea. into. <laughs> Like aliens are Got into it. this kind of shit, and they're like, "Hey, Got it. you guys like it?" Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, um. Well, should we should we go back to call one two? I just call wanna, one. Since I want to wrap up call two before you do. Okay. 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 Just with one statement that this is yeah. all the things that we're talking about. This is in the same phone call he proposes to Scully. <laughs> 
Yeah, he also um, proposes to Scully that it's witchcraft. It's playful. No, he he yeah. actually says no, no. Marriage. He says Scully married me. Married me because the bit yeah. is that Scully knows all the like occult stuff mm-hmm. and witchcraft stuff because she's been dealing with right. Col- she's Mulder had to put up so with his horse shit for so long. Yeah. But yeah. that's the, I do like the line the she describes us hogs us. Us uh-huh. X Files hogs, we mm-hmm. just eat it up. We gobble yeah. it. Oh yeah. Yo, hell yeah. Mm, mm. That's what they call the fans too. X hogs. X hogs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I love that, and this is throughout it. Is she describes to him what she's seeing, and like like a like a plumber identifying a problem. He's just like, yeah, that sounds to me like uh, I don't know some kind of witchcraft or sorcery. Yeah. And she's like, great, thanks. And he's like, t- like he's just throwing out guesses. I gotta say, I love actually the X Files version of Techno Babble that, like, on Star <laughs> Trek would be the tachyon fields need to be moved to the lateral units, Captain. Ooh. In this, it's like, um, Juju, Scully, fetishes, the witchcraft <laughs> tribes of the Northeast oh, yeah. from the 1800s. Like, they just rattle off a bunch of, like, Grimm's fairy tales connects to fetish jujuism. You know this, Scully. Uh, it's very <laughs> delightful as it rolls over my brain. <laughs> oh, it's great. It, it's probably whatever whatever person they have on set keeping them on task. Oh, with who this just stuff. like folklore? Yeah, yeah folklore technical <laughs> consultant. I, I like to imagine they look like fucking Gandalf or something. They're just like some weird, creepy old oh, man in the corner. Like, hey, how can we explain the evil doll? We want to do an evil doll episode. Ask our technical director. Hey, what do you think, guy? Well, you would take the <laughs> dust of Koresh. And- <laughs> he opens like a book with a fucking face on yeah, it. Do we have to listen to this guy? Yeah. Nah. Chris Carter says, do whatever you want. <laughs> but I honestly bought it. I was like, that's a good, because when you offer evil doll and Mulder even says, what well, you mean? Like Chucky, <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> you're ready for it to be dumb and corny. And they successfully obfuscated that line. I was like, it's not that dumb and corny. I, I buy the argument that like, Oh no, no, no. It's not a dumb evil doll. It's a witchcraft style fetish yeah. that was imbued with power by this coven that was persecuted. I like that's actually a fairly good justification for a dumb evil doll episode. Well done. M- Mulder is very good at like making something sound like it has like some sort of like scientific logic when he's just talking about folklore. He'll be like, "Well, right. many people believe this." And it's like, okay, I mean, that doesn't make it true, but sure. Also, <laughs> that sure. Chucky line, by the way, he's so fucking dismissive at first. Right. And it's, it's also like, uh, Chucky. It's, yeah. also, it's also not at all what she's describing. No, not like, at all. Mul- Mulder has but, a deep enough knowledge about all this kind of stupid ass bullshit that he should know there's a difference between a doll that can make people do things, which is specifically what Scully says, and Chucky. Right, and he even gives her solutions, yeah. but he, he says, I suggest you check the back of the doll for like a plastic ring with a string on it, and it's like, motherfucker, you took her hunting for a lake monster once. He's done like, worse Mulder, than that. Yeah. <laughs> also, Come on, Mulder. That joke doesn't even land, because that would make it talk more. She's yeah. trying to shut it up. Yeah. It doesn't work as a, what he wanted to say was the evil switch, but Simpsons did it, so he couldn't. Yeah. He also suggests, by the way, do, do they do this a lot? Where, I guess to show that you can believe him when he says crazy shit, Mulder is actually the voice of reason? Because he was like, well, maybe it's just simple mass hysteria, yeah, Scully. Oh, maybe rarely. it's the dancing rarely. sickness. Rarely. This is a okay. Flip. But it's interesting that in this episode, I guess because he's stuck at the office, he yeah. throws out the more mundane possibilities. Oh, well, yeah. it's, it's usually, this fits perfectly into this section. Um, Mulder only really... It, casts himself as the voice of reason or pushes back when it's scully's theory yes i see when it's he, like scientific. he gives like there's an there's there's a couple of episodes and anytime she brings in religion Mulder is like the most insufferable no. kind of atheist Mulder has literally like harassed demons in yeah. the show and whenever she brings up god he's like Psh, whatever scully and it's like you know demons exist Mulder. Yeah, it's all right richard yeah. dawkins chill out yeah <laughs> it's um yeah it's I, bizarre you guys are, i feel like you're burying the lead though because Mulder in this episode i know 
specifically when he says, "Oh, it's is it a? It's probably like a I don't know, like a fucking possessed doll or something." You know, like she un unprompted, he diagnosed the exact problem. He knew exactly what the issue was. And all she did is say, like, there's a little kid and she's got, like, a doll and there's this. He's like, oh, yeah, that's what it's like. Oh, it's the doll. doll, Wait, 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 wait. It's the doll. If, right, I just feel like, of course, what else could it be? It's easy to diagnose. If someone said, I saw this mass hysteria thing, everyone clawed their eyes out except this one lady and she was screaming at her kid and her kid was holding a doll that kept saying, I want to play. I'd be like, evil doll. You probably yeah, got an doll. evil doll on well, you. Yeah, it's because you're aware that you're that in the X Files. Yeah. Uh, also, also uh, like Mulder, Mulder tends to this. It's all. It's another. Mulder um, knows he's on the X Files. That's right, his yeah. thing. <laughs> well, the yeah. thing is, is he usually he will whip out some like pulling out a, a, a fully formed theory uh, with very little evidence is kind of his deal, um, and he just always happens to be right. So it's yeah. this it's it's very on brand for Mulder. Just be like, oh yeah, it's probably like Juju or something. He uh, also real quick. This is call four. Just a shout out to his map nook uh, that I didn't know he had in his office. When she calls him, he is in front of a giant map, mm-hmm. and he has rolls of maps like he's like he's on an old timey pirate ship. Oh, uh, dude, yeah, no, he's got maps. <laughs> I didn't know he had a map nook. Oh, I don't he know sure what the does. fuck he's map up in the mindscape, oh, Dave, brother. He's 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 like logging cases and sightings oh, yeah. and shit. He's got like oh, yeah. forty maps. How no, are you yeah. gonna find <laughs> out what a string <laughs> of murders, <laughs> what pattern it creates, if you're not putting a thumbtack in every uh-huh. site? Exactly. Right. Yeah. right. He's got to put that string from tack to tack. I get it. We get, I get, a, it. We get a couple other. I mean, th- mo- most of the other glimpses we get of Mulder in this episode is just confirming things we already know. Like yeah. he opens his refrigerator. He's got w- nothing in there but an expired jug of Sunny Delight, which checks out because we know mm-hmm. that Mulder never <laughs> sleeps, and he also he frequently lives like an animal. Forgets to eat. That's yeah. also the fact totally that there's the nothing in his fridge checks out completely. Sunny D is definitely the drink of someone who would throw on some basketball shorts and dribble inside their apartment. Yeah. Okay. So what's up? Right, Those things there, go because, together because it takes he, it forever to go bad. He okay. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. I want to talk about the basketball because he calls the local PD to track down Scully. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets her on the phone. He says, hey, morning, sunshine. I was a little worried about you. There's sounds of banging. She's like, what's that banging? And he's like, ah, it's just some construction. Uh, hey, guys, can you knock it off? And then it reveals that he's like in his basketball shorts or underwear. I couldn't tell. And he's pounding on a basketball, just dribbling it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why doesn't he just say, oh, sorry, and like stop dribbling? I'm, why he, is he dribbling you know to why? begin with? He called her. Because she didn't call you know and why? interrupt him. I mean, that's why this is all Mulder after dark. He gets off on lying to her for no reason. That's why he lies about the pencils in the he's third He's trying beat. to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the facade of like, when, so when you're trying to court someone, you're like, yeah, I'm very interesting. I got a lot of shit going on, but he's mundane. So his right. thing that's going on is construction. He just. You're right can't reveal the reality of himself because he has the insecurity that he's not enough for Scully. You guys that's pointed out that's relatable. Here. That's mm-hmm. what's he's, X-Files. He's about. flirty, isn't he? He's flirty Mulder in Are this you episode. kidding me? Yeah. Every, that's all these the, the only reason you gotta he understand gets three vignettes. This. Yeah. Listen, all you gotta understand this is like Frog on a Hot Plate. It's slowly increasing as we watch the episodes. But it is Mulder's feeling cheeky here. In the first epi- in the first call, he's like leaning on the chair like a kid who has to pee. Well, that's, yeah, that's, like he's he's all they weird open and up flirty. The porn thing, and it's like it's all horned up from there, man. Yeah, right, because he's also, thinking about Scully, so he has to watch swarm porn. Yeah, it's also that's he what doesn't. This is. Well, and she's like, "What did you do with your time? Did you just array these little um, symbolic facsimiles of penises?" And he's like pan up no in fact i embedded them in something i inserted right. them and they penetrated something that's what i did scully yes yes it's, it's, it's all medical. there yes yeah, it's the, also the symbolism it, is truly a pain. truly chupacabra it's also Mulder can't sit still Mulder yeah. can't Mulder can't yeah. be at rest Mulder can't not have his 
mind working and he also doesn't know what to do with himself when she's not there he doesn't have anyone to pester or so it's yeah, like yeah, he's, he's balancing on the it, he's it, yep. everything he's yeah it's it's flirtatious but it's also nervous kid energy and he doesn't want to admit mm-hmm. to it like he's balancing on a chair he's ba- bouncing a basketball he's throwing pencils into the ceiling it's all stuff that bored kids do but so, Flash, he's signaling to the audience not to like not to he's oh, incomplete ahead. he's incomplete without yes. scully correct and or not to pull the curtain back too much, but Stephen King had no good use for Mulder in this episode idea he thought of, because you could literally cut Mulder. The episode you could almost works you could almost fine. cut Scully. She doesn't she doesn't honestly yeah, do anything you until you the very could last. Scene. Have the case solve is, itself like a little yeah. wind up toy, and that this would is, be fine. This is a lot of X Files episodes. You can literally take them out of the episode. Uh, and it'll and go the same sequence of events would just resolve. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most like uh, somebody said earlier, it was either you or Abe, um, in in diagramming a typical X Files episode that it ends with them uh, winning or emerge or triumphing or emerging victorious, and that's like twenty percent of the time. Right. Most, yeah, because, most of the resolution comes yeah. from them just witnessing things. They're witnessing right, powers right. that can't be controlled. That's, that's, like, that's yeah. what the tone is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they don't make any. They rarely make any arrests or actually close or any cases. But this yeah. one is so like she's so lateral in her like she's just finding she's just one step behind oh. and then she arrives and then exactly. she goes yep. in not the not to mention the microwave all she does is transfer the curse to another person so she basically resolved this literally for as long as she was on vacation right. well, she's now gonna leave this town and the doll will immediately begin murdering people again immediately mm-hmm. it's just not on her radar anymore that's she, all she she's not a good officer of the x-files <laughs> there's a lot of episodes where it's and then the bad guy's eyes open there's the equivalent but of you're that like, with a lot of episodes that just not- lead to an episode where they deal with it again it's not right. like they wouldn't deal with it again <laughs> sometimes yes. they have sequels sometimes oh they don't. okay there we sometimes go sometimes they do but not this one and this is why like i think stephen king is better suited for like buffy or something sure for so many reasons for not just like the harder <laughs> edge and like the like the playful americana of it all but for this very suggestion most buffy arcs that are important usually happen later x files was kind of where we like started cutting that cloth and saying like oh yeah you can bring it up again right uh but it didn't feel like enabled enough to actually complete these arcs so yeah and it it really is like even at the end of this muller asked scully did you solve it and she's like no not really uh because there's just so many like this where they just shrug and leave and (laughs) And just leave behind a trail of fucking like trauma, mm-hmm. and, and and no one gets a ar- like they have. Tom, what would you say is their arrest rate like, or how 20. often do they even solve a crime? Ten to twenty percent. Yeah, <laughs> roughly. Uh, roughly, yeah. and I think that's being generous. Uh, twenty is definitely generous, but like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so good, yeah. That's so good. They're really bad at their job. Um, also, I just want to point out, Mulder, we get we find out how Mulder get, got his poster. Uh, I no was going to ask, here. are we, did we luck out? Is this by chance the origin? Like, is, is this the first of origin of the poster? Believe. Wow. Yeah, he bought it at he a, head it shop a head shop on M Street. <laughs> which checks out. Yeah. Yeah. What do you Where'd think Where'd you that get that t-shirt? About, I bought it at a t-shirt store. Wow. Epic <laughs> origin. Epic. Um. What do you Any think that idea, scene uh, is about, though? Like, you mean if yeah. if not because that that let's say that poster was not icon or wasn't fan service? At, what was the purpose of the scene from a storytelling point of view? Is an interesting. It's question. about Scully. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's about Scully. Right, because so the situation is that Scully asks, "Where'd you get that poster?" Um, and then he answers with nonsense, and it, that doesn't need. That doesn't matter. The point is that Scully... She wants to send it. So by the end of the episode, what's up? She's... Mulder's all horned up the entire episode. And Scully Scully finally shows... Scully comes back and is like throwing him a bone. 
is like, hey, yeah. what's up with you? How are you? Yeah. Yeah, that's what this is. This is like they're starting the stilted, shitty in... flirting that they're gonna do. Yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. the fact that like Stephen King can't write an X Files episode because he can't write the voices of Mulder and Scully. Therefore, Chris Carter had to like step in and just say like, okay, this episode They'll I'm gonna just like draw it, like write it on the wall. Yeah. This is what's going on with them. So that we're like, oh, yes, give us the sweet juices. That's what we want. Will they, won't they? And yeah. like, that is Carter. Like, this is a seminal piece. Like, this is a classic episode because of the shit that Carter allowed himself to do. Because he was put in a corner and he was told, like, all Which, right, you need to do this other, like, whole other B plot. By the way, I, the two of them. I would call it a C plot or a runner. Yeah, it's a C plot. I think what a like the parts of the episode Abe is referring to is a total of like four and a half minutes of footage, which is amazing to yeah. think about. So it and is just very like, yeah, flirt, flirt, flirt back. Oh, I guess this is a thing now. <laughs> yeah, the, but it's all building, you know, like that's. Mm-hmm think about friends it's the 90s baby <laughs> i will say x files definitely me. it goes goes back and forth with their flirtiness like we're nowhere near a uh, kiss moment uh which is mm. i believe the first one is the x files movie where there's a near miss kiss mm-hmm. it's so, the first official yeah. kiss i think is the millennium episode it's a new year's kiss it's a friend kiss uh it's it's really it really it takes back. a while they had to dial it back. Creating mm-hmm. that continuity in They're a TV me. show, especially yeah. a show designed through a system, like unlike something like Deadwood or what have you, like where, you know, you're going to have writers rotate in and out is so hard. Like I think yeah. of how Fry and Leela, if you chart it, it's like not, sometimes they seem to magically exactly. regress and be less together than they were at the end of the last episode. Exactly. It's, right. it's tough. It's tough to nail on a long running series. You got to um, navigate it. You know, Any you other thoughts? To... Yeah. Any other thoughts on Mulder? Because I have a few Romance. Scully observations. Sure. Uh, I just want to point out that I don't think Scully's ever been on a vacation before. She right. she gets on the phone with Mulder and says the weather is really nice and it is absolutely not nice. <laughs> uh, yeah. She dresses in all black like she's a fucking puppeteer. Well, but well, with a t-shirt that uh, just says t-shirt like that says Maine. Hey, yeah. New yeah. England. The second, day, here, the second yeah. day she takes a bath and gets <laughs> in all black. Yeah. Like heist outfits. She is mesmerized by the existence of a lobster. Uh, I don't know if she's seen one before. It's a giant lobster, dude. It is a it's giant lobster. It's not that big. Is this me being from New England? It's also, I love New England. You know, when you roll into town for the weekend for a vacation, the first thing you do is go to the grocery store and get a full sized cart. Yeah. Like, how much shit is she going to buy at the grocery right. store <laughs> for this three day vacation? Right. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. all I had for Scully. She just yeah. seems like a fucking alien. She's bad at on vacation. Yeah. It does seem like she randomly picked a destination and just because yeah, she's staying. She's staying in like a, a podunk motel. It's like yeah. this is your vacation. She just yeah. needed a break from Mulder. It's a mental health break. Yeah. Let's be honest. You're right. She she just got <laughs> she in the car this went next from Mulder. Uh, yeah. You guys yeah. are so wrong. F- Mold- Fox Mulder is a maniac. This is true. It is yeah. known. Uh, Scully is also a maniac. They're yeah. perfect for each other. Embrace it. Their love. Their sweet, Look. sweet love. <laughs> it's unique to both of them. And it's what it's X Files gift to all of us. Of course. I mean, we already covered the Never Again episode where Scully uh, meets a, a random dude at a tattoo shop, uh, tries to make a connection, and almost gets burnt alive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. By this she, dude and his tattoo that speaks to him with the voice of Jodie Foster. Yeah. She makes some decisions in her life. <laughs> Not great decisions. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. They're both. That's the, that's the thing about Scully is that, like, I think for the first couple of seasons, she's maybe thinking about the book she's going to write when right. Mulder inevitably gets, like, killed by the cops. Right. Uh, and then eventually he just kind of rubs off on her to such an extent. It's he's a cultist. He's a cult leader. Yeah. Like by the end of the se- series, like Skinner is doing fucking wild shit for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just draws everybody in. Yeah. And maybe yeah, these are people who are already sort of 
uh, needed this in their life to begin with was drawn to him. Yeah. I don't it's, know. They had it's a what I call the Fox Network. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. By the All way, right, a cop beats themselves to death with a wooden baton in this, which must have been tough. It must right, have required yeah, real grit and determination. Hmm. Considering the mom beats herself in the face with the claw end of a hammer about four or five times, yeah. and it's like, fine. And but they even but that I imagine doing that in real life and I'm like, fuck, yeah, yeah, that would hurt. I imagine that with a cop's baton and I don't even think you could work up enough speed just bending your forearm yeah. that that would be that big of a deal. Yeah, and, he's probably just been slamming his head for like 45 minutes screaming about how he doesn't know why he's doing this. And how could he be <laughs> rendered anything other than unconscious? Does he fall unconscious and keep beating himself for another three to eight minutes? <laughs> his arm just yeah. keeps moving. It was the doll. The, he, he passed out and the doll took over. Yeah. Which is right. wailing on him. <laughs> uh, it reminds right, me and- of that, uh, <laughs> like you said, Tom, with the 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 claw hammer. It reminds me of that uh, Team America yeah. joke <laughs> yes. where he's like, <laughs> where if you have to capture. kill yourself... We'll and give you. We'll take care of you. Here's a hammer. That's how you kill yourself. It's oh, just so a good. hammer. It's the worst thing to ever. Great gag. Uh, that's so. It's such. It's so king. It's so yeah. king. Make it the worst thing ever. Yeah. Uh, all right. You want to get into some fireball offenses or any other thoughts on Mulder himself in this episode? Nope. Not for me. Yeah. He's all right. What what a mess! What a spec- yeah. what a specimen! Always really, is. Yeah. It's wild how little you can see him in episodes and how much of an impact he'll make. Still, right? I remember we did musings of a cigarette smoking man, an episode where literally you never see Mulder, you just hear his voice, and we were able to talk about him for like a half hour. <laughs> right? Sure. Exactly. He yeah. does say at one point in this episode, classic X-File, classic. Yeah. <laughs> Which is just just perfectly postmodern. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get into Fireball Offenses. Um, I really am not sure about this one. I think for Scully, uh, you're not supposed to like investigate crimes on your vacation, right? Um, she can help out if the sheriff's cool with it, I guess. Really? Yeah. It's not vigilantism to do it outside your jurisdiction. Off duty. Although she's FBI, I so I guess her jurisdiction is nationwide, right? Federal, By definition. Yeah. I think we're learning this from most like FBI shows, and we don't actually know. And the reality must be closer to uh, no, but you can start to clock in. If you like stumble right. upon a crime, I feel like if you're handling a crime, you gotta like call. You, you gotta, gotta like, call the someone. Stuff. Yeah. You gotta yeah. check yeah. in, like, hey, get your I'm name on some paperwork. Yeah, yeah. No, you turn on job mode. You go, oh, yeah. I here's a murder. Well, f- my vacation's fucked. So and. You know, I assume uh, there's been an FBI agent or two in reality that have been like, mm-hmm. there's a there's a murder over there. Ah, I'm on vacation. You know, like because right. that's the reality. You have but to But I also vacation. assume that if an FBI agent saw a crime happening right in front of them, even if they're not explicitly on duty, they could arrest Intervene. someone. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. a doctor who's like, is there a doctor in the house? You know? Right. Yeah. This is also uh, just TV rules. Like yeah. we've we've done episodes where Mulder has committed acts of terrorism, mm-hmm. so like it's not that bad. I, I, this one, it's yeah, not it's not bad. too bad. There's no, been like worse. she's not she's not stepping on anybody's toes. Like the sheriff's not going to complain, and she was never there in an official capacity anyway. So it's not when like this other is ever people get back to Skinner. When yeah. other people come and inevitably view it through a secular, non supernatural lens, all it will seem she did is microwave a doll. That's not fireable. Yeah. So it's fine. No, it's weird. It's definitely weird. It's weird, I, I, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like, I have a feeling she's not even writing a report. No, like why that, would she? She has the benefit right. of this one of like, she it's just, just unofficial. It's off the books. <laughs> yeah. This one's for me. Yeah. Yeah. One for them, one X-Files for me, one for them. Yeah. Um, well, then let's name the enabler. Uh, who Who is enabling Mulder? 
I, I, I also want to say this is kind of about who Mulder is enabling at this point, because Scully is clearly very conditioned to look for paranormal stuff, and mm-hmm. she's becoming she's a Rolodex all, she, I was of about paranormal to say, She's already Rolodexed so much well, of it. She's yeah. kind of, she, as we said, it's a seemingly an unusual episode where he's talking her down from supernatural theories that turn out to be true most of the time. So it makes me wonder if she's really the Mulder in this time around. All right. Every now and then they'll do. They will. I think they've done like at least one other reversal episode. Well, and in that case, it's she the local has a cop. theory, and Mulder's like, "All right, yeah, it's the it's local the local cop. cop who shows up with like a hangdog expression, like someone else died. I don't know what to do about <laughs> it. It's, right? It's he keeps, droopy. He, he goes to her hotel. Like he's <laughs> that's the thing. She <laughs> wakes up on vacation. <laughs> that's after she's <laughs> largely <laughs> solved the case. He's like, we still haven't worked out the details, though. And he, like, yeah. shows up at her hotel just staring through her window. And without any lines, she's just like, all right, clocking in. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he ruins her vacation. Yeah. Uh, and what did she want to do, though? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know what her vacation plan was. Uh, she especially was because it's implied she didn't intend to eat a giant lobster while she was she there. What the like fuck the else are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. She she was reading a book and taking what? a bubble bath. You guys, what if she was going there to stalk Stephen King because she's obsessed with how amazing Hell he is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the true that's imprint. Got, and that's, 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 King. that's that's the that Chris Rose. Carter Scully. cut out. Yeah, yeah. That's the right, yeah. after Stephen King, the writer. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, that sounds um, exactly on point. Damn, I tried to look up the place. Um, Amos uh, Beach. Amos Beach, Maine. It's it's apparently fake. Uh, it looks like most of uh, King's main places are fake. Yeah, yeah, that checks out. I mean, it's comedy, um, so yeah, yeah. So I was gonna I was gonna see if there's like something cool, like a cool FBI museum, some kind of nerdy shit Scully would be into. No, no there's yeah, it seems like she's just got in the car and started driving. Yeah, I think so. I think she just kept driving, didn't realize she was going north. She just needed to get out. She just needed a fucking break. She's just... <laughs> Where are just... they? Virginia? D.C.? D.C. D.C. Yeah. 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 So she, she just was like, the Cape. I'm going to go to the ocean south. from here. I'm going away. <laughs> yeah. Like, I will I, drive yeah, I know why she any didn't... direction. She didn't go to the Cape because that's where Mulder's, where Mulder's mom, lives. mom lives. Yeah, yeah, on Martha's Vineyard. There, so there's she, been, there's, there's follow been her there. on more than one occasion. Mulder has taken a terrifying night drive up to Martha's yes. Vineyard. It's, it's because, like a seven-hour drive. It's because Mulder knows basketball, so he knows zone defense, and you have to create yeah. a perimeter around yeah. the offense. Yeah. So he knows <laughs> that he just cuts off all of New England. She can't yeah. get to Canada. No. Yeah, maybe she was making a maybe maybe she was making a go at Canada, and yeah, that's what she's she trying to do. And Mulder yeah. stopped her because he's a. See, I want to see. <laughs> I want to see Scully in Miami fucking stopping Dexter. Yeah, she needs. She should have gone to Miami. She's bad at vacationing. Unfortunately, Shooting she's gators she's in the bad face. At it. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's go to Crazy Like a Fox. This is our final mm. section. Mmm, folks. This is where we assign a numerical rating from 1 to 10 to grade uh, Agent Fox Mulder's behavior in this particular episode. Um, you know, 1 being he's relatively in control and 10 being he's, he's shooting at invisible men, hijacking gondolas, stranding himself in the Arctic Circle, you name it. Yeah, uh, going on a plane with an alien bomb. Bringing an alien bomb onto a commercial airliner, you know. Yeah. Jumping on top of trains. <laughs> Jumping off a bridge on top of moving trains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a pretty low one for the reasons we already sort of described. Yeah, this uh, is going to be like maybe a two. Yeah. Uh, any objections? I The number three came to mind for me just because the... The confusion around the alien probe tape, I think, bumps it up a full number for me. <laughs> That's a notch. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I, if yeah, he had I'm, just dribbled the basketball and thrown the pencils, I'd go too. But I'm going to give him three for the world's deadliest swarms. Okay, I, I'm okay with the three. That's fair. Uh, it's it, it's it's. I mean, it's not. 
it's not a particularly revelatory window into Mulder's mind. Yeah. It's just more evidence confirming what we already suspected about Mulder. Yeah. But it's cute that even in his burgeoning, sweaty, pubescent love for Scully, he's, I mean, like, like cokey, I want to say, like the nervous kid energy mm-hmm. you were talking about. He, he is in all. He's in, a legit weirdo. He's a legit weirdo. Yeah. And he's also a giant, a giant boy, basically. Yeah. We've talked about it a lot, but he's, he he's is like a, a little weird, boy. stinky dork. <laughs> yeah. Trapped in a man's body. <laughs> yeah. And if, if, once you once you narrow down that he's a weird, smelly dork, like everything he does makes sense. <laughs> he's just that kid grown up. Yeah. Yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. He's just that the, kid. Yeah. Yeah, man. They the don't question that I'll never wrap my head around, and maybe if I watch the early episodes, it makes sense, is I don't understand any explanation of how him, that guy, even the little I know about him, how he holds that position. I don't understand how he's in that's, the FBI. That's, that's part of the of the thesis of this entire series. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> they must have said something. Well, okay. About I can. That. Well, I can answer that a little bit. Is as far as we can tell, Mulder is the equivalent of the guy who works at a dealership his dad owns, mm-hmm. because his father is part of the shadow government. Oh, it is revealed. Okay. And that uh, explains and, a lot. Both, and there's both of also, his dads. I was about to say both of his dads. There's also other father figures who are in the shadow government kind of watching out for him. And so it really seems like the shadow government is just like, yeah, let him, let him go. He's, he's fine. We want to try to unravel all our all the shit that's going ah, on. But uh, yeah. Also, but no of, agency, no like actual power. Part of the, uh, of, of the canon of the show is that Mulder started his career as like a brilliant criminal profiler. Uh, and then he found the X Files and lost his mind. Right, that's what the show wants us to think. Is mm-hmm. like he's so good that they're like we can't get rid of this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's done us such a solid. Do they ever have those scenes where he uses profiling skill, and you're like, oh, I guess he could have been a real sometimes, yeah, sometimes. profiler. Sometimes, yeah, especially in early seasons, he's sort of like brought on to cases. Yeah. Explain the whole show uh, to me. Yeah, oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the podcast is. Great. Yeah. Mm. Let's go back and listen. There we have a bunch of episodes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you guys should, we should have you guys back on sometime for like a real 10. This I'm sorry this isn't a 10. Uh, if I know we... Yeah, I don't know if it's more or less or equally useful to have someone who hasn't seen a lot of the intervening episodes, but I'd know. love to be on one that Mulder appears in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we definitely have a 10 coming up a few episodes from now uh, called Bad Blood. <laughs> That's the one where Mulder and Scully oh, yeah. are sued when, Scully, when Mulder uh, murders a teenage boy thinking he's a vampire. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, boy. He, 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 uh, <laughs> he, he stakes the great Hambino from the Sandlot. Yes, yes. Also, Luke Wilson is there. <laughs> yeah, Luke Wilson uh, plays the sheriff. Yeah, Hell but yeah. until we get to that episode, we have to we have to traverse the episode Kill Switch, the one where Mulder gets sucked into a computer. Hell yeah! Oh, <laughs> That's all time. time. Top episodes. Jeez. We're getting, as we explained, things are getting a little fucking shaky here. The waters are getting uh, murky. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite first person shooter, but we're on the way. No, you can't we're see on the down way. to the bottom. There be um, monsters. I do not yeah. envy you for the remaining seasons. Uh, no, it's going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be dark. It's going to be, gonna be dark. Gonna be dark. Then we'll get to the X Files movie, and that'll be like a special. Hell yeah! We're going to have to have a special. We'll get, for that we're going to have. We're going to have to get like three or four or eighteen episodes out of. You should that. do multiple yeah, part because I mean, he is insane. <laughs> well, at least do a two parter or something. I don't know. That's There's yeah. Just, a bunch of circumstance <laughs> in that movie. <laughs> um, well, shit. Thanks yeah. for coming on, you guys. Yeah, thank you hey. guys so much for being guests on the show. Oh, yeah, wow. This was wonderful. Legitimate pleasure. That felt fast. What a delight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we can just shoot the shit. Like, what, how, how are you guys doing? What are you yeah, up what, to? Yeah, what are you up to? <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't care about any of that. Okay, fine. Um, hey, the where, voice where of can reason. We find you guys? The, the transactional the portion of our friendship has passed. So, <laughs> yeah, I see. Uh, <laughs> you're you're being a real. Scully. I see how it is. <laughs> look, look. Why don't you guys? Why don't you guys tell uh, the listeners where where you can be found? Sure. Uh, uh, see, that's uh, that's we specifically oh. chose you for a reason. 
That's true. It because of the constant will they won't they in the air so thick you could cut it with <laughs> yes. a knife. Pal- uh, it's uh, we call ourselves small beans. You can find all our stuff at patreon.com slash small beans or all our podcasts by just searching small beans, you know, on your podcasting thingies. But uh, I will say a nice thing about Kings of King where we cover all the adaptations of Stephen King works at which this now I'm this we you know, our podcast never would have been complete if we hadn't done this. Mm-hmm. You guys literally just saved our podcast. Really? Right, because I we never would have Abe. Don't you think we would have skipped this without even thinking about it? Uh, yeah, we probably would have. We probably yeah, would have skipped I'll this. Be Not with to, you. Yeah, and so now we, we have just a complete set. Which I'm, like ah, that one, that one, that one sounds good. But I feel like we'll have a fine tooth comb eventually. Yeah. But what's nice is unlike you schmucks who are stuck in the seasonal order, we keep skipping back and forth between like like we just did Maximum Overdrive, but next we're gonna do Green Mile. Good palate nice. cleanser. Very. Ex- I've yeah. been listening. I, I'm like halfway through Maximum Over Overdrive. It's a great episode. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun one. Yeah. So that's what we're up to now. Kings of King. Abe, you got anything else? Tell me about Director Piece, man. <clears throat> yeah, we have Director Piece Theater where me and Adam Ganser, a uh, friend of the pod, I guess. Um, we are both directors, so we kind of inspect directorial work in. Uh, the pantheon of like, I don't know, movies that you wouldn't expect to have good directing. Um, and we just kind of pick it apart and that's director piece theater. And we do that. We have a bunch of shows, but yeah, check us out. Small beans. Sweet. Um, yeah, this, 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 uh, this show that people are listening to is normally behind a Patreon paywall. That's patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. Mm. Uh, this is one of two exclusive podcasts. The other is Tom and Jeff watch Batman. Mm. Uh, it's a $5 a month sitch. So just uh, go on there and, and click, click the buttons. Yeah. You can listen to all these episodes. Do that thing. We also have a store at tpublic.com slash store slash gamefully unemployed. We get t-shirts, masks, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of things. Check that out. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, leave a review, leave a review. Uh, is there anything people want to like? Assuming Mulder's listening to this, anybody want to say anything to Mulder? Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is the chance. One last, one last thing to Mulder. <laughs> I mean, Lord, Lord bless you, sir. Yes. Yeah. Keep keep on not existing because you are okay. a maniac, yeah. sir. Uh, okay. Yeah, but yeah, give these people your money <laughs> and give, happy Mulder Day. Oh give yeah. Them. Yeah. Oh, is it Mulder Day? It is. It's Mulder Day every, already. Every yeah. every day you're any day you're listening to this is technically Mulder Day. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> keep them in your hearts. Artwork for Fox Mulder is a maniac is produced by Starlene Hodge. Follow her on Twitter at Starlene X. That's Starlene with an X. Or check out her delightful webcomic at RubyWhipple.com. <laughs> <laughs>